Hey, physics team. Hope you're doing all right. I would like to talk with uh, with you today about a couple issues that came up on the first day of school that we really never resolved. Um, and, and I want us to do that right now. Uh, first thing, uh, how do we decide which variable goes on which axis? You might remember that that was a common question that I asked of a lot of groups. Like, why did you choose? You put time on this axis and the distance the car traveled on that axis. Why did you choose to do it that way? And there was an assortment of reasons, but we didn't have a clear consensus on a response to that question. And I want to come back to that. And the second thing that I'll address in another video is, should I make a best fit line or should I draw from dot to dot to dot? Maybe you recall that on that first day of school, some groups drew a line where they knew intentionally they were missing some of the data points. And other groups drew from one dot to the next, to the next, to the next. And we're going to address that second point in another video. But for today, I want to focus just on this first question. How do we decide which variable goes on which axis? So there is a way that we make this choice. Um, when scientists make graphs, the common choice is to put the independent variable on the horizontal axis and the dependent variable on the vertical axis. Now, you're used to calling those axes x for horizontal, y for vertical, and I get that, I understand that, and I'm not upset about that, but something that you'll notice is that I tend to not call them x and y axes. I really strongly prefer um, to, to refer to them as dependent or independent um, or to give a specific name based on what I'm putting on that graph, like the time axis, the distance axis, etc. cetera. Um, and, and we'll see a little more clearly in the future why X and Y really don't do it for me. Um, but that's for another time. So, there's a clear follow-up question to me, though, that we need to address is, okay, so if there is a plan when we're sciencing that the independent variable goes on the horizontal axis and the dependent variable goes on the vertical axis, how do I know which is which? And I would bet that right now um, there's probably a pretty wide range of comfort levels in terms of people feeling like they have a good sense of how they can tell which is the independent, which is the dependent variable. And other people who probably want a refresher or like, tell this to me like I've never heard it before, please. Um, so one way that I'm thinking about this is I'm going to have to measure two variables. If I want to find a relationship, like say everybody on that first day of school was measuring distances and measuring times, um, and some groups made some different choices in one class or another, um, but the majority of groups ended up either making a graph where they're like, I'm going to see every certain distance that this thing travels, how much time does it take, or every certain amount of time, what distance does this thing go. And so everybody was measuring distances and times. And one of those was your independent variable, and one of those was your dependent variable for most of the experiments that you did that day. So you measured both of them, but you made choices about one of them. And that other variable, you decided what that first variable would be. And the second set of measurements depended on the choice that you made. So your independent variable is the one that you decided how much it was going to be. And the dependent variable is the variable that depends on the choice that you made about how much. Like some people chose how much. We're going to go every 20 centimeters. How much time did it take? We're going to go every one meter. How much time did it take? And so the how much time did it take, you would get different amounts of time depending on the choices that you made about how far apart to check. So let's look at this in a different context. 
Um, student sets up the following experiment to find a link between time elapsed and temperature for a beaker of water being heated by a Bunsen burner. Because if there's anything we get to do in chemistry class, it's we get to heat water. Um, so she starts her stopwatch when she places the beaker over the burner. Um, so the stopwatch starts at zero seconds and the temperature in the room just happened to be 25 degrees. Uh, she's going to record how much time elapsed for every temperature increase of five degrees Celsius until the water reaches its boiling point. And I want to think about like, what's the independent, what's the dependent variable for her experiment? Um, if I want to fill out more of this data table, um, cause you know, like once I start measuring, it's going to be action packed. Watching that water heat up is going to be super exciting. There's going to be a lot of action. So maybe I want to fill out this data table in advance as much as I can. So the times, like the next time, I don't know how much the next time is going to be. I do know that the next temperature, it's going to increase by five degrees. So the next temperature will be 30 degrees and the next temperature will be 35 degrees and the next temperature will be 40 degrees and so on. All the way up since 200, not 212 degrees. What am I thinking? That's Fahrenheit. No, but up to 100 degrees Celsius. And I'm not going to go all that way. But we know what the temperatures are going to be before this person ever runs the experiment. Now, what will the times be? I don't know yet. I can tell which one's going to be my independent variable because the independent variable, I decided what those numbers were going to be. Or this student in the experiment decided I'm going to go every five degrees Celsius. But some other student might have thought like, well, I'm going to go every two degrees. So I'm going to go 27 degrees, 20, 29 degrees, 31 degrees, and so on. And so that student is going to get a different set of times than the first student did. And so the measurements that we get for the time are dependent on the choices that we make for our independent variable. In this situation, the independent variable is the temperature. The dependent variable is the time. And I can always tell which one's my independent variable because that's the one where I could fill out that whole set of numbers on the data table. I could fill out that whole column before I ever start the experiment. So if I wanted to reverse that, like if I wanted to recreate this experiment, somebody else maybe wants to do this experiment where they are going to make measurements where instead of every set number for a temperature increase, then I'm going to not write it out quite as clearly as I did the first time because you don't want to sit here and watch me type. But maybe this student is going to measure the temperature every, let's say, every 30 seconds until the water boils. And I can decide then that the next time is going to be 30 seconds, and the next time after that is going to be 60 seconds, and then 90 seconds, and then 120 seconds, and then 150 seconds. And I don't know before I do the experiment what temperature that water is going to be at 30 seconds, what temperature the water is going to be at 60 seconds, what temperature the water is going to be at 90 seconds. But the half of the data table that I can fill in right away, I know that that's my independent variable. So I've switched. So now my independent variable is the time and the dependent variable is the temperature. Or coming back to what we did on day one of school, some of us did, like I have in blue, if you can see the colors, uh, group A says, we let the car run and every 20 centimeters of distance that it traveled, we checked how much time the stopwatch read. And then maybe group B sets up an experiment like, we're going to let the car run and every second that goes by on our stopwatch, we're going to mark how far the car traveled. 
Now, both groups have variables of time and distance, but which one is their independent variable? Which one is their dependent variable? And how are we going to represent that on a graph are a little bit different. So we're, we're looking at differences in how these groups are structuring their thinking about how to measure. And for reasons that are going to come up very soon, then we're going to see why it matters to scientists to put the independent variable on the horizontal axis and the dependent variable on the vertical axis. It has everything to do with the way that we write slopes, the way that we express slopes, and trying to build meaning out of slopes. So generally, if we want to build good quality meaning out of this work, then we're going to want to follow that, usually follow that tradition of independent variable goes on the horizontal axis, what you're used to calling the x-axis, dependent variable goes on the vertical axis, or what you probably call the y-axis. So with that first group, we let it go, and every 20 centimeters, ooh, that should say centimeters, not meters. That's going to bother me if I don't change it. So every 20 centimeters, we measure how much time it took the car to get there. So the distance in that case would be our independent variable, since those are the numbers we chose, and the times are going to depend on those distances that we put into the independent variable column. And so on my graph, I have distance traveled on the horizontal axis, time on the vertical axis. On this second graph, on the data table, we chose every one additional second. So after one second, after two seconds, after three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, how far did it go? And I don't know, but I can make my measurements and I can see something like these numbers. I'm just making stuff up right now. And then I can plot those points. But in this situation, then the time is the independent variable. So that goes on the horizontal axis and the distance traveled is on the vertical axis. And these two graphs, sorry, I didn't color code that graph on the right. Um, these two graphs are going to have different slopes because even if we have the same information, then we've got that information represented differently. And when we look at what is the slope telling me, then we see that information showing up differently on our slope. And that's going to have a lot of meaning for me, but that's for another video.